Hi, welcome to my channel. My name's Chris. Have you ever been confused by the myriad of colors to choose from in watercolor? In this video, I'm going to show you the five blues that I have on my palette and why I use them. I'll swatch out those five colors and talk about the characteristics of each. Let's get started. In today's video, I'm going to show you the five blues that I use in my paintings. They are all situated here in this part of the palette. And let's go and swatch out each of these colors and I'll talk about the qualities of each of these pigments. I've already prepared my watercolor paper here. I have the spots for the five swatches. And uh, it's important to know that I am going to swatch out these colors from the warmest blue to the coolest blue. And uh, again, this is somewhat relative uh, and a little bit subjective, but there are blues that have uh, hues that are closer to lavender, uh, the red or warm end of the spectrum. And there are blues that uh, go more towards the green end of the spectrum. And so I, uh, the five colors I have on my palette uh, range from warm blues to cool blues. So let's take a look at those. One of the blues that I use the most is French Ultramarine. And French Ultramarine is considered a warm blue. And uh, we can see that here. It's a beautiful blue. It is highly granulating. And uh, it mixes really great with things like French, or excuse me, um, burnt sienna to create neutrals. And it's just an all around great color. And I highly recommend you have this on your palette. That's French Ultramarine Blue. Uh, also, by the way, every color that I'm going to share with you today is a Daniel Smith color as far as brand goes. You'll also see here I have the uh, pigment number. This is PB29, French Ultramarine Blue, Daniel Smith. Again, on the warm end of the spectrum. My next color is PB28, and this is Cobalt Blue by Daniel Smith. And it is a little bit cooler than the French Ultramarine that I just put down, just a little bit. Uh, you can see that difference here, hopefully. And um, if you don't really understand or have a difficulty in identifying cool versus warm, I just encourage you to swatch out all of your colors in a certain family of colors, for example, in the hue of, of blues and swatch them all out if you have multiple blues and just see how they, what they look like in relationship to each other. And hopefully you can begin to see uh, the coolness or warmness of relative tones or hues, I should say. Uh, again, this is the cobalt blue. Cobalt blue is kind of in the middle of the temperature scale between warm and cool. Uh, it is cooler than French ultramarine, but not as cool. Should I, maybe I better say that again. Yeah, it's cooler than the French ultramarine, um, but it is not as cool as some of the next colors I'm going to show you, which go more towards the green end of the spectrum. The next color is found on a lot of palettes, and this is Thalo Blue uh, by Daniel Smith. This is Thalo Blue Green Shade. Daniel Smith makes a, blue, a green shade and a red shade of their Thalo Blue. And this is a very vibrant color, as you can see. You can get very, very uh, dark, intense shades of this color. And um, I, I think it's a color that maybe doesn't always get reproduced in nature uh, in its pure form like this that much. And so it, it's, a, it's, again, a very intense color. Um, it tends to be mixed more with other colors to create like dark purples and almost blacks if you mix it with red things like that. Um, but, uh, and it's a high staining color. It's not a color I use as much. So of the three that I've put down so far, I tend to use my French ultramarine and cobalt blue much more than I use thalo blue. The next color here is a color I use a lot and it is a lighter, uh, less intense color. Um, I'm, I'm trying to put them down very, very intense or thick application of the color here at the top and then add a little more water as I swatch it out towards the bottom of this area, just so you can see the color in all its uh, intensity as well as in a very transparent application there. And uh, this color, Cerulean Blue Chromium by Daniel Smith, 
is a beautiful color uh, for, especially for skies. I think it's probably the color I use the most for skies, whereas the French ultramarine tends to be a color I use more for water. And um, yeah, it's just a really gorgeous color. It is granulating and uh, it is more towards the cool end of the spectrum. So hopefully you can begin to see that now. Uh, here, warm end of the spectrum, you're closer to the lavenders and reds. And so this color here tends to look like it has more red in it. Whereas if you get this direction, you start to see the colors have more green in them or, or start to lean towards, I should say, the green end of the spectrum. And my last color here is kind of a cheat color. It's, um, it is called cobalt teal blue. So it has blue in the name. However, the pigment number for this is actually PG50. So it actually is a green pigment. Um, and you can really see here, hopefully now as I put this down, really how uh, this leans towards the green end. And I guess that's because it is a green color, green pigment. However, it has the name blue in it, uh, cobalt teal blue. And so I wanted to include it in this collection of the blues on my palette. These are all the blues that I have on my palette. This was PG50 Cobalt Teal Blue, and I think I didn't mention the pigment number uh, for Cerulean. This is Cerulean Blue Chromium by Daniel Smith PB36. Now as we wait for these to dry, I just want to talk a little bit about some of the qualities of each of these colors. Uh, first of all, they are all single pigment colors. I prefer to purchase colors that have only one pigment in them. I feel that I have greater control uh, over the mixes uh, from different colors on my palette if each color is only made from one pigment. The more pigments you have in a color, the more they can tend towards muddy colors and less bright colors when you start to mix lots of pigments. So I like to keep them pure pigment. So these all are made from a single pigment. Again, starting on the warmer end of the spectrum, the PB29 French Ultramarine tends to be, a, again, highly granulating. Uh, it's really good for mixing neutrals and it is a fairly transparent color. I find that when I mix my French Ultramarine with other colors, that granulating and the separating of the colors inside the color mix seems to uh, really be accentuated when I use this color as opposed to some of the other colors on my palette. And so I really love to use the French Ultramarine. I use it all the time. Again, the Cobalt Blue I said was kind of in the middle of the temperature spectrum uh, in the blue hues. Uh, cobalt Blue Daniel Smith PB28. Um, this is a great primary blue. Uh, if you wanted to kind of create a triad of primaries, uh, this would be a great color to choose for that. And it is low staining and also a little bit granulating, though not as granulating, I don't think, as the French Ultramarine. And you can kind of see that if you zoom in here, you can see how much granulating is going on here versus what's in the cobalt blue. Again, the thalo blue, a color I probably use the least of all of these five colors, the thalo blue, uh, is more of a staining color, it's a high staining color, and that's one of the reasons I don't like it as much. I like to use colors that I can lift if I want. I, I put the color down and then I come back with a wet, clean brush and lift the colors later. It's really hard to do that with a staining color. And so uh, I tend to avoid staining colors, And uh, but the Thalo Blue does mix and make some really brilliant greens and uh, bright green mixes and uh, also can achieve some very dark, uh, even black colors when mixed with um, a, a red color. And so I, I like it on the palette for that reason. The PB36, which is my Cerulean Blue Chromium, uh, need to be aware there are two Cerulean Blues in the Daniel Smith lineup. There's Cerulean Blue Chromium and then just plain old Cerulean Blue. I like the Chromium version of that. It's more brilliant. It's it, it actually you can get a darker color with it. Uh, it is not quite as granulating as the Cerulean Blue, uh, which by the way is PB35. Um, that one, the Cerulean Blue without the Chromium is a little more granulating, but I still like the Chromium version of it because of the intensity of color you can get with it. Uh, the uh, other Cerulean Blue is just really, really, really transparent, very light and hard to get very strong colors. And then finally, the cobalt teal blue, as we said earlier, it really is a green pigment, um, but it's got the, the word blue in it. I included it here. Uh, partly I included it just so you could see what I mean by a cool blue that 
uh, moves towards the green end of the spectrum. You can see how green this color is in relationship to the other, and maybe it helps you see the full spectrum of colors within the blue family of colors. Probably the most important reason I have PG50 Cobalt Teal Blue on my palette is because this specialty color or convenience color is pretty hard to create on your own mixing it from other colors. And so there are certain colors that I find in nature, for example, in some water scenes, things like that, that I find it would be difficult to create that color. So it's nice to have the color pre-mixed, ready to go on my palette in these certain cases. So that's why I have cobalt teal blue. So hopefully you found this helpful and maybe this helps you choose some of the blues for your palette. Please leave comments. If you have other blues that you like to use on your palette, please leave them in the comments below and uh, I may check those colors out. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.